So first two compounds we'll take a look at here. Uh, so we've got 1,3,5-hexatriene, one we visited uh, earlier in the semester here. Uh, if we look here, this is not even cyclic. And not even cyclic, he fails rule number one, and failing any of the first three rules, this makes him non-aromatic, and I'll just say non for short. If we look at the second one here, we want to focus on this carbon atom right here. That carbon atom is sp3 hybridized. So, and being sp3 hybridized, he does not have an unhybridized p orbital, and he fails rule number two. And again, fail any of the first three rules, and you're just simply non-aromatic. So, if any system is not cyclic, or if you do find any sp3 hybridized atoms in the ring, right off the bat, they're going to be non-aromatic. Now the next comparison here, I've got cyclobutadiene and benzene, and we definitely already know benzene is aromatic, but I just want to kind of go through with the rules with it. And, uh, so if we look at benzene, so cyclic and conjugated, you bet. Uh, any sp3 hybridized atoms? Nope. So every atom is going to have an, uh, an unhybridized p orbital. So it's a ring smaller than seven carbon, so it will definitely be able to have a planar conformation. Uh, and then we count the electrons here, and that's pi electrons, that's pi electrons, that's pi electrons. We've got six pi electrons, or three pairs, that's an odd number of pairs, and that's a 4n plus 2 number, and that's why benzene is aromatic. Now, if we look at cyclobutadiene, on the other hand, so cyclobutadiene is indeed cyclic and conjugated. No sp3 hybridized atoms in the ring. It's smaller than, uh, seven atoms are smaller, so it can be planar. Uh, but in this case, it has only four pi electrons here with the two pi bonds. So, and with four pi electrons, that's two pairs, that's an even number of pairs, that is a multiple of four, and that's what makes it anti-aromatic instead of aromatic. So, there's your big difference between anti-aromatic and aromatic. You pass all the first three rules, it's how many pi electrons at the end. So now we're going to take a look at pyridine here, and pyridine is what we call an aromatic heterocycle. It has uh, an atom in the ring that is not carbon. That's what makes it a heterocycle. So, and in this case, it's nitrogen. And I will first want to focus on what is the hybridization of that nitrogen atom. And like it's got two bonding domains, one non bonding domain, that's three domains total, and he's sp2 hybridized. So, in being sp2 hybridized, he's got three sp2 hybrids. One is being used to make that bond, one is being made to use to make that sigma bond, I should really say, and then one is being used for this lone pair. So that lone pair is in an sp2 hybrid orbital, so no big deal here. But the big reason I want to point that out uh, is it's not in an unhybridized p orbital, and so it's not part of the pi system. So we've got pi electrons there, we've got pi electrons there, we've got pi electrons there, and I've just confirmed that the lone pair is definitely not pi electrons, not being in an unhybridized p orbital. So with six pi electrons, that'll become important in a second. So but let's go back through the entire list of rules now. So it is cyclic and conjugated. There are no sp3 hybridized atoms, so it's a ring that's seven atoms or smaller, so it can definitely be planar. And then, in this case, six pi electrons is a 4n plus 2 number. It's an odd number of pairs, and that makes this compound aromatic. So before we talk about these next two examples, I just want to remind you of something. So. If we look at this nitrogen over here, he's got three bonds and a lone pair, and if I asked you his hybridization, hopefully you'd come up saying sp3. So now I want to add in this pi bond right here, and if you notice that nitrogen's kind of in an allylic position, and it turns out he's no longer sp3 hybridized. So as we learned a little bit earlier, so if we take a look here, uh, resonance considerations here, we can sh draw another resonance structure. So, and if you take a look at now these resonance structures, this one looks sp3 still, but this one over here, the nitrogen looks sp2 hybridized. And so the question is, which one, uh, which hybridization is that nitrogen really? So, well, keep in mind these resonance structures don't even exist. What really exists is the average resonance hybrid, which looks something like this. So we've got delocalization in both these locations. The nitrogen's partially positive, this carbon's partially negative. So, but this delocalization is evidence of the fact that there are sideways overlapping of p orbitals. There's unhybridized p orbitals. So, and because there's unhybridized p orbitals, that definitely rules out it being sp3. So if it is sp3, there'd be no unhybridized p orbitals, there'd be no delocalization at all. Since we do know there's resonance and there is delocalization, it must be sp2, 
not sp3. So due to resonance considerations, we've learned that some atoms that in one resonance structure look sp3 are really sp2, and now that's going to become relevant here. So, and in this case, I'm focusing on this nitrogen right here and this nitrogen right here. They've both got lone pairs. So, and the question is, uh, do the lone pairs count as pi electrons, and what's the hybridization of these nitrogens, and things of a sort. Now, we just talked about pyridine over here with this lone pair, and we found out that that lone pair was in an sp2 hybrid orbital, and was definitely not part of the pi system, and uh, that nitrogen already had overlap, sideways overlap of p orbitals going on, you know, right here with the actual pi bond in the structure, and so the lone pair couldn't have been in a p orbital, but we'll find out that that's not quite going to be the case here. So here, neither one of these nitrogens is making a double bond. So there's no evidence right off the bat that the nitrogen has pi electrons, and that puts the lone pair to potentially be in a p orbital uh, and be pi electrons. So in this case, if you looked at the nitrogen, it's got three bonds in a lone pair, and it looks sp3, just the same way that that nitrogen over there looked sp3. But it is one bond away from pi electrons, and we might expect resonance. And so let's just put this up here. So sp3 is a possibility, but sp2 is also a possibility. Now let's just look at the results though. If he's sp3 hybridized, well if he's sp3 hybridized that means he's not going to pass rule number two and that would just make him non-aromatic. But what if he's sp2 hybridized? If he's sp2 hybridized that means he's going to have an sp2 hybrid orbital to make that bond, to make that bond, to make that bond, and that means the third unhybridized p orbital, that is where the lone pair is, in a p orbital. And if it's in a p orbital, that means they're pi electrons. Well, we already know that these are pi electrons, but now we just figured out that if indeed we're sp2 hybridized, the lone pair is also pi electrons, and that's going to leave us with six pi electrons. That's an aromatic number. So in this case, this is cyclic and conjugated. If we're sp2, then we'll pass rule number two. Definitely could be planar being a small ring. And in this case, we'd have 4n plus 2 pi electrons, and that makes this aromatic. So, and that is indeed the case. So the idea is that we had a chance of being either non-aromatic, if that atom, that nitrogen atom is sp3 hybridized, or aromatic, if he's sp2 hybridized. And whichever one of those is more stable is what nitrogen chooses to be. And so in this case, the nitrogen chooses to be sp2, and that makes this molecule aromatic. Now, it's going to be a little bit different in the next example here. So in this case, with this nitrogen, again, he has a chance of being sp3. And if he's sp3, he fails rule number two, and he's going to be non-aromatic. So or that nitrogen being one bond away from pi electrons, if there's delocalization, that would make him sp2. The problem is then that lone pair is going to count as pi electrons, and those are definitely pi electrons, and that comes out to four pi electrons, and that's going to make him anti-aromatic. So now the nitrogen's got a choice. If he's sp3, he's non-aromatic. If he's sp2, he's anti-aromatic, and it turns out, out of the three options, being aromatic is the most stable and the best. Being anti-aromatic is the least stable, highest energy, and is the worst. And so out of our two choices, we'd actually pick being sp3 hybridized and being non-aromatic. And so the crux of it is this, is when you've got a lone pair on an atom in the ring, sometimes it's going to count as pi electrons, and sometimes it won't, and you have to know when. So we learned on the last slide here, so if you've got a lone pair on an atom, if that atom already has a pi bond, then the lone pairs it has do not count. That's the first thing. So Next thing is if you've got a lone pair on an atom, if it does not have any pi bonds, and notice this nitrogen's not directly making any pi bonds, then the lone pair counts if it makes it aromatic, but the lone pair doesn't count as pi electrons if it makes it anti-aromatic. And that's kind of the deal here. So again, if an atom is not making any double bonds, the lone pair may count. But if the atom is making any double or even triple bonds, then its lone pairs don't count. That's kind of the rule here. So let's look at some more examples. All right, so more practice for this same concept here. So in this first example here, we are cyclic. So, and the question is, do we have any sp3 hybridized atoms in the ring? And so in this case, this auction is two lone pairs, two bonding domains as well, and he does look sp3 if there's no delocalization. But the lone pairs in the auction, that is an, uh, one bond away from pi electrons, so there is a chance for delocalization. And we learned in a ring is that that delocalization only takes place if it makes it aromatic. If it makes it anti-aromatic, it won't take place. And so in this case, the question is, is he sp3 hybridized, that auction, or is he sp2 hybridized? Now, if he's sp3, that's easy. He's just simply non-aromatic. 
But if he's SP2, well, key is he's got two lone pairs, but only one of them even has a chance of counting. Uh, being SP2 hybridized, one of those lone pairs is just going to be in an SP2 hybrid orbital. Then I'd make this sigma bond with an sp2 hybrid orbital, and I'd make this sigma bond with an sp2 hybrid orbital. That would leave this lone pair, only one of them, to be in the p orbital then, and make it pi electrons. And so, in this case, cyclic and conjugated, yes. No sp3s, maybe. So planar, definitely. And in this case, six pi electrons is a 4n plus 2 number. So, and that's going to, that would be an aromatic number. And so, in this case, if he's sp2, that makes him aromatic. So is he non-aromatic or is he aromatic? Well, he's definitely going to be aromatic. The oxygen's going to be sp2 hybridized and one of his lone pairs will be in a p orbital and therefore count as pi electrons. Let's look at the next one here, and this one's as tricky as I could go, and I've got two different nitrogens that each have lone pairs. One thing to note, I've drawn both these lone pairs outside the ring. Sometimes you'll see the lone pair show up inside the ring next to the nitrogens. Doesn't matter. Whether they're drawn outside the ring, inside the ring, a lot of students are like, oh, if they're drawn inside the ring, that's when they count or something like that. There's no rule for that. They can be drawn anywhere here, so don't get confused by that. But in this case, uh, for this nitrogen down here, he's got pi electrons already, which means that this lone pair is not going to be pi electrons. They're just going to be in an sp2 hybrid orbital, and they don't count as part of the pi system. But this nitrogen right here, not making any double bonds, doesn't have any pi electrons yet. And so in this case, for that one, they might be pi electrons if it makes it aromatic. Well, we definitely have pi electrons there. We've got two, four, and maybe six. Six would be an aromatic number, so that means they are going to count. Those are going to be pi electrons. That comes out to six pi electrons, and that makes this structure aromatic. So what you might notice then is that since this lone pair is part of the conjugated pi system, the aromatic system, that makes them very, very stable. Whereas this lone pair is just in an sp2 hybrid orbital, so not part of the conjugated pi system, and so they're nowhere near as stable. And so we'll find out that if you know if this molecule is going to act as a base, it would definitely be this nitrogen with the less stable lone pair that would be acting as the base. All right, this next example, we've got 1357 cyclooctatetraene. Uh, in this case, it is cyclic and it is conjugated. Uh, each atom in the ring must have an unhybridized p orbital. Well, there's definitely no sp3s here. They're all sp2 hybridized. So, but the crux here is, is it planar? And we said earlier, if you've got seven atoms or less in a ring, it can definitely be planar. If you've got eight or more, maybe it is and maybe it isn't. So this is one example that I want you to memorize that it is not planar. It's not, again, there's no rule that says eight atoms or more are always not planar, but this specific example is not planar and we expect you to remember that. So if we kind of looked at what this actual structure looks like, so it kind of looks like a funky boat or something like that. So and some people will draw it like this, and whether you put the double bonds in those locations or the other four locations, whatever you want to do. Uh, but in this case, it's not planar. We expect you to know it's not planar. And being not planar, it fails rule number three. And failing rule number three is going to make it non-aromatic. Now, had it been able to be planar, four, you know, four pairs of pi electrons, eight pi electrons is an anti-aromatic number. It would have been anti-aromatic. But not being able to be planar makes it non-aromatic instead. Now in the next two examples here, we've got carbocations, and one thing you might recall about these carbocations is they are not sp3 hybridized, they are sp2 hybridized. And being sp2 hybridized, they have an unhybridized p orbital, but being carbocations, they're electron poor, that unhybridized p orbital is actually empty. It does not have any electrons in it, we're not going to add any extra pi electrons or anything of that sort. So, But if you look at these both in tandem here, they are both cyclic and conjugated. Uh, Every atom in the, both rings are sp2 hybridized, so there's no sp3s. They're both seven atoms or smaller, so they can be planar. And the question then comes down to the number of pi electrons. Now, this one's got four pi electrons. This one has got six pi electrons. So, and there's your big difference here. So with four pi electrons, this structure is anti-aromatic and fairly unstable, whereas this one over here is aromatic with six pi electrons again and is fairly stable, uh, as far as carbocations go anyway. So there's your big difference. So, But carbocations are sp2, not sp3. Uh, sometimes that's a way of getting around rule number two, right? So if these hadn't been carbocations, but just sp3 hybridized carbons, both of these structures would have ended up being non-aromatic instead. But again, being carbocations, they're sp2 instead. 
All right, the last example we're going to look at is an example of what we call an annuline. So, and it's a very big ring. It's definitely bigger than seven atoms. So, it turns out it is cyclic. It is conjugated. You've got it alternating single and double bonds all the way around. Uh, there are no sp3 hybridized atoms. They're all sp2 in the ring. Um, and the question is, can it be planar? In this example, it turns out can. There are definitely planar annulines that exist. So again, I said earlier, if you've got seven atoms in a ring or less, you definitely can be planar. But if you have eight or more, you might or may not be planar. This is an example that is planar, and that's actually why I'm showing it. I don't want you to come away with a rule saying that eight or more atoms are never going to be planar. It's not true. Here's an example that definitely proves it. Uh, and so in this case, if we count the pi electrons, there's two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, and that is seven pairs, an odd number of pairs. That's a 4n plus 2 number. So, and being a 4n plus 2 number, this is definitely aromatic. So again, one word of the wise, again, if you've got eight atoms or more in the ring, some are planar, some are not. And here's two concrete examples I gave you that uh, you should definitely memorize. So again, 1357 cyclotetra, uh, cyclooctatetraene uh, definitely is not planar, but here, this annuline with 14 pi electrons definitely is planar.